Do you know that the former king of the Zingers was Prince Philip? <laughs> that, that was your father, right? <laughs> I think we heard about Did your father. Did we talk about this? I can't remember if we talked uh, about it yet. Yeah. <laughs> did, did I tell you the joke that he had, the zing he had about the Queen of England? Mm -mm. So he would go like, well, back in, back in... <laughs> Early days with the Ottoman Empire or falling apart, the, uh, the uh, queen decided that uh, we were going to refurbish the crown jewels, which were said, of course, of course, upon the, uh, the crown of England, filled with rubies and emeralds and diamonds and one last piece. There was one last piece. And the queen, she, she traveled all over. Though. She traveled to India. She traveled to, to uh, the Orient. She traveled all over trying to find that perfect jewel to tap off the crew and she traveled and traveled and traveled she exhausted all all of her funds and and uh she sat there upon the throne until she finally decided on the one jewel that she had before we said we said to her oh, no, no, yeah, dear queen why did you travel so much looking for a jewel which you already had and she said well bitches a bee a shopping <laughs> it was absolutely <laughs> worth the payoff <laughs> Welcome to INS, the International News Service, your source for the most important weird news from across the globe, with news analyst Kevin Harrison, actor, comedian, and musician Mike Wiebe, and professional commentator Brian Camp. INS, the news you need. Welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison, along with Mike Weeby. <laughs> I got excited. I'm sorry. Brian's supposed to go first. Uh, I'm sure Mark will cut that out. Let's go ahead. And <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the International News Service. <laughs> Welcome to the International News Service. We're your hosts. I'm Kevin Harrison, along with I, I'm decided I don't want to do it again. Mark has to use one of the older ones. Okay, well, Let's leave it at that. He's Brian, I'm Mike. Mark's not here. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, nothing is going right. We're all trying to make it through in this this uh, this herky jerky thing we call society. But hopefully, the INS team is here to give you the news with uh, no spin. But a little bit of curve. <laughs> Solid stuff. Yeah, Mark not being here is... It's really throwing us off yeah. a lot. Yeah. You no, know, and we're all banged up. I got a broken toe. Brian's got a Band-Aid on his face. Mm -hmm. Mike has mm -hmm. yard work to do. Mm -hmm. uh, my, 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 uh, my wrist is a little itchy. Ooh, itchy wrist. <laughs> Ooh, I hate maybe that. You have, maybe you have a Chagas disease. What is Chagas? That's the, the kissing bug disease. Where they I, scratch your face and then rub ooh. their own feces in the scratch. Ooh, that's you, that's that sounds like a German disease. <laughs> no, no, it's a it's a Southwest disease. Well, I, that's that's uh, worrisome because I do make out with my wrist for practice. <laughs> that's right. It's just your wrist is covered in kissing bug feces. Oh boy, here we are. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> it's his damn Thanks. fault. So our first story comes to us from Staffordshire Live. Police were called to a store in South Derbyshire in the UK after a man refused to wear a mask, claiming that wearing masks had shrunk his manhood. The man then went on to encourage other shoppers to remove their masks before the same thing happened to them. Well, he, he sounds like he would have been just fine if he would have gotten an official INS mask available. Oh, that's right. At the uh, red red bubble. Red bubble. Guaranteed to not shrink your penis. Guaranteed yeah, to exactly. not shrink your penis. In fact, you get an INS mm -hmm. mask, your dick's going to be twice as big. And if you're a lady, mm -hmm. your vulva will swell. Swell. So mm -hmm. big that it'll be painful to sit down. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the inside of the mask is coated with our proprietary chemical called Grolon. Yep. Genital, genital mm -hmm. grow. Mm -hmm. G grow. You'll know it's got a G grow coating because you'll see a G with a hexagon around it on the inside of the mask. So don't exactly. be fooled by substitutes. Bootleg merchandise. 
Yeah, don't go go get new tropics from Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. That shit doesn't yeah. work. Look at him. He's a fucking little shrimpy bubblegut weirdo. Look at us. We're fucking guys with big hogs. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're showing them to each other right now. That's a, a tradition. Police removed the man without confirming whether his claim of having a shrunken penis was true. And a local police spokesperson later confirmed this was not even the first time they'd had a call like this one. England's mask mandate requires masks to be worn at indoor shops and supermarkets until at least July 17th. Derbyshire. So is is yeah. is Derbyshire a, a, silly, a city or a village, Kevin? Tell us about Derbyshire. Yeah, tell us all about it. South Derbyshire. Now you say sure. Uh, <laughs> hey, me. Me old twig and berries, put put a mask on in what became a bramble bush and a log is now twig and berries. Don't put your mask on, just eat your pudding. (laughs) The the bramble bushes. (laughs) Uh, Me me bramble bushes was overgrown. There's there's a badger that lives in there. Stacks of badgers in there. Stacks of badgers. <laughs> a renowned badger. What are they? What are this? I, you know, usually England's the trend center, so you got to go over there, and that's like, ooh, the strokes they're from here, but they get big over there first, and then everybody thinks they're cool. Enemy has to break you for you're big in the states, but apparently. They're just getting wise to being a fucking dumb, dumb dipshit about wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. That's uh, maybe the tides are turning. Maybe England, maybe now the U.S. is going to be the place that does all the dumb shit first. And then England's going to follow. I I think that's that's been true for a long time. What what bands got big over here before getting big over there? Who was think? I don't. I don't think that's true at all, and I don't think that band's cool. So there. Oh, you mean actually good bands? I'm sorry. Yeah. Because I thought you you were suggesting they did something stupid and then we followed, and we we would now be no no the no. Because no. I don't think what like because that is true. It used to be like the, all the cool music yeah. from here right. go over there, get big, and then we go uh, like not we like I, I knew about it. I knew about it probably before I knew about it before the fucking English did. Probably knew about it before you guys and everybody else. What was cool? Mm-hmm. Right. Knew about it before Pitchfork. I tell you that right now. So what I hear you saying, if I if I understand correctly, is that you have you've claimed that your penis shrinkage is based on wearing masks, and now this guy in England is copying your small penis. No, I'm just saying the general concept of right. uh, because I don't have a small penis. <laughs> it's big. And the the general concept of it's totally it's com- medically it's they they literally said it's medically big, um, and <laughs> they they I understand like the concept of taking something, taking an American idea that somebody that's like on the cutting edge it's real fucking you know like they're like and they're like oh well I guess any American too that could do that so they're just picking random dildos that are uh, you know from. Uh, outlying areas of our our hometown and uh ba- they don't they don't know they think like you know they figured out some, they just checked up on some redneck from crumb instead mm. of you know probably somebody who shops at j&j's <laughs> isn't that one of the two gas stations we established in crumb yeah, yeah. j&j's and jd's yeah yeah <laughs> j&j's and jd's and you know now now those two gas stations are kind of in a little bit of a, a feud so there's a bit of a Starbelly Sneech sort of scenario going on about who's going to have flaming hot Cheetos and mm-hmm. whatnots there. I don't know. It, it's it's cu- I'm just saying it's curious. I'm not like I don't believe in. Cons- I'm not a conspiracy theory guy, but I'll just like let that information out there. Right. Hey, do your own research. <laughs> That's all I've ever do your said. Own research. That's all I have ever said. Do your own research. <laughs> but I'll, I will say I I I always wore a mask and. And it, and again, there's there's I've got documentation about Masks? My, my size, right. about my general size. Nurse, make a note in this man's file. Yeah, big. That's, yeah, that's, you've heard that in your life. I All got. Right. I remember I had to go get a COVID test, and when they gave it back, mm-hmm. it was on a card, and there was a little box that said <laughs> positive, negative. It was negative for COVID, 
positive for dick too big. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a real problem. Yeah. I saw that picture, but it, it looked like you had just written that in with crayon. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, do I design fonts on printers? <laughs> no. Is a fa- fax machines also, they fax it to me. So the fax is probably an ink problem, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Toner. It's, they're that thin fax fucking paper. I don't think they use that paper anymore, but I do. Who are you? At my house. Okay. All right. I like, I like, I like vintage things. I like when there's a little bit of class in this fucking world. Real, your classy fax machine. So yeah. You get the vacation offers on it all day long. I love the sound. And I get that you wouldn't get this, that you guys love everything just quick and now and your, and your TikTok and your Snapchat. I love the sound of a broadband modem. I love it. It reminds me of a time when things were a lot more civilized mm-hmm. better better era better era yeah. better era better. clothes were baggier yeah there was a governor on on things you were you were limited by the speed with which a telephone could connect you to yes downloads or the governor was benson oh yes <laughs> governor benson who's the guy in benson that we were talking about the other day <laughs> that would be Rene abujoué abujinois also known as odo on uh star trek deep space nine yeah that's right. It's the same guy. I still think that's fascinating. Thank you for that. That would have really bothered me if if I couldn't remember that. That's what I'm here for. Mm, well, well, one of the one of the hundreds of things I'm here. One for. of the one of the many things. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I guess case solved. Uh, English. Right. They are playing second fiddle to us in everything, including the dipshit department. Right. Yeah. Next, we'll start getting diabetes. So, yeah, next they'll start shooting right. up their fucking grade schools. Yeah, real cool, England. Yeah. Would the English say diabetes or would they say diabetes? Yeah, it's, it's, called, it's, called, it's called a sugars. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course they would say the sugars. Too much toffee. One lump hey. or two. Ah, <laughs> give it to me till my foot falls off. <laughs> <laughs> they love their sweets. Teeth are not as bad over there as you would, you know. I've seen some. Oh no, yeah. not that bad. Well, that's not. I mean, that's always a a weird stereotype. Everybody's it is, teeth yeah. were it's just they're average. They're just average yeah. teeth. Yeah, they're no, they're not too much worse or too much better. Our next story comes to us from the Washington Post. Wapo, wapo. <laughs> Earlier this year, the tiny impoverished town. Of Lana Koenig, Maryland, had a population of just 1,200 people until January when someone purchased the winning lottery ticket for a Powerball jackpot of $731 million. The ticket was sold at the local market, but Maryland is one of just seven states that allows lottery winners to remain anonymous, and the ticket buyer has chosen to remain secret. People have poured into the town from all over the country and written the market asking for money for everything from medical treatments to mortgage payments to vacations. And one woman even wanted the money to buy two chainsaws. What a mad woman. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. What was her name? Uh, Fucking Mrs. Leatherface. Uh, Yeah, Lavender Face. Because ladies love the lavender. (laughs) I wish Mark was here to hear that fucking <laughs> joke that didn't do good. <laughs> I would have the female version of Lavender Face. <laughs> she, 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 you know, she's just as deadly, but she's just, lady. Just as terrifying. Yeah, Lavender Face. Lavender Face. What smells like gas, like a gasoline engine and lavender? Yeah. And when you smell that, it's already too late. So you know, she like cross stitches shit on her but it's <laughs> she just has a sampler over her face <laughs> <laughs> she's horrific <laughs> it's about time we had a gender swapped leather face i can see that yeah gender swapped halloween michelle myers there was that texas chainsaw massacre with uh matthew mcconaughey and renee zellweger where she was like the female Leatherface kind of. Nah, she was a victim, and then she goes crazy after being victimized. Okay. 
Are there are there any female serial, serial killer movies or, or slasher flicks where the slasher is just female and it's not part of some twist at the end? Like where you just kind of know from the very beginning that like, oh, it's a lady who's just doing all this slicing and dicing and hacking. Uh, Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> <laughs> She's the yeah. devil the whole time. Mm. And you know it. Mm. Meryl Streep? I always want to say Meryl Street. Like Sydney, she's Sydney Greenstreet's daughter, right? Who? The yeah. fat guy from the Maltese Falcon. I know. I actually, I knew. I just wanted to seem uh, aloof and young, like Brian. You fucking pricks! <laughs> now, now the bit is to also not know something and then make fun of me for not knowing it because really, I knew it all along. That's great. <laughs> that's that's a real. He has a Shriner's hat, right? It's a fez. A fez, yeah. Shriners, you are you are really just jumping all over the Eastern Hemisphere. We've lost the, the Shriner audience now. Thanks, Mike. That's right. You might as well have just burnt a child. Wow. I mean, <laughs> that's what that's what Frederica Krueger would do. <laughs> that's that's her mo. She burns the, she burns the kids and then she stabs them. She stabs them. She's got knitting needles. She's got a hand made of knitting needles. <laughs> They're just clicking these knitting yeah. needles together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she she kills them and then knits a sweater mm -hmm. over their dead bodies. Mm -hmm. Looks like I dropped a stitch. Yeah. Just like, yeah. <laughs> you know, Pat, no joke, for real. They are coming out with uh, and I swear to god, this just dropped. And I completely forgot until right this second. They just announced that there's going to be a Hellraiser reboot with a female pinhead. Whoa. No. -uh. I swear to God. I swear to God. Are you setting me up to make fun of me for believing you? <laughs> is this what this is? No, I'm not. I mean, I we I can put it in a group chat. She looks, you know, she's got, she's, she's, a, uh, she's a couple kind of monsters. One of them is a Jugosaurus. Uh, the, the, the artwork they had. <laughs> She was very. She has a low cut. She's got showing a lot of cleavage. <laughs> Way to break, break Brian. I, I swear to God, that is for real. Has and it I, been greenlit? Is it being made? Is it's it being, being made. They 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 cast the woman, whoever the the gender swapped pinhead. They cast her, and I I wasn't familiar with who she is. But is it going to be a reboot, or is it going to be in the Hellraiser world? Well, let's look it up here. Female lead cast in Hellraiser reboot with gender swapped pinhead, and I, again, um, she's uh, she's uh, she's yeah. gonna need to get her bra resized, um, because that it might not be fitting her. Uh, we're getting word that Odessa A. Zion has been cast as the female lead Riley in the upcoming Hellraiser reboot in the works of Spyglass Media, not to be confused with the Hellraiser series in the works at HBO. This news comes via Illuminati. Developers were looking for a female to play a gender-swapped pinhead in a reinvention of the classic antagonist. I, I watched Hellraiser 2. I know I'm probably not supposed to talk about things that we do outside of this, but we watched a movie together. Those are together. private activities. <laughs> private. You're, not, you're not supposed to. We watched Hellraiser 2, and, uh, and I learned that the character of Pinhead was a British shorts khaki shorts wearing archaeologist right who refused to wear a mask because he thought it made his penis smaller mm -hmm. and that's why he got a box he wanted to get he wanted to figure out a way to go shopping for pudding and he got the hellraiser box mm -hmm. because he just, his only thing was like i will take pins in my face i just don't want a smaller penis that is not how I remember the movie. He was just out to get some spotted dog. That's his... yeah. Do you think he has? Do you think Pinhead what? had had pins in both heads? <laughs> well, he he definitely wants the most pain, and I think that would only add to his desires. I guarantee, I guarantee there's a there is some fanfic for that as well. There is an yeah. image. Somebody we're not, is. We're not going to Google that. There is no way that is even close to the worst thing you've Googled on your computer, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but no he was i guess he was just kind of a scrawny kind of english dude mm -hmm. I, I wonder if they will similarly similarly cast a unremarkable looking lady to end up being lady pinhead or if it'll be you know they're not gonna go with any kind of artistic integrity you know? here they're gonna go with the with whoever sells tickets uh you know really at the end of the day uh the real star of hellraiser is hell 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I would put Hell as one of the characters, one of the main right. characters of the movie, if not the main character. Is do they use the letter Z in the title Hellraiser? And if not, do you think they will for this version? I hope so, because we are of an era where we are eschewing S's and going with Z's. We're in an era where you casually use eschewing. Thank you. You pronounced it in a very posh way. Well, we're talking about all this British stuff, and it's really, it's really bringing that out of me. And we're talking about British men with lots of little nails in their penis heads. <laughs> it starts to get me... It is. Yeah. Why did you bring this story, Kevin? This is this is odd. This doesn't seem well, okay. So maybe the strangest thing, at least statistically speaking, mm. is the people who wanted to buy at least lottery- uh, testistically thinking. Yes. Exactly. Ah, Testic- oh, fuck. God damn it! You got no. We got to just go back a little bit. There's a lot of swings and misses tonight, but you know what? <laughs> It's Mark's fault because he's not here. Yeah, there's no anchor. There's no there's no center line for us to cling to as we yeah. take chances on hilarious wordplay. Exactly. A, Where the a, Voltron the Voltron line has no torso. Now, when yeah. you say hilarious, you put that in quotes, right? No. 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 Mark not being here is a joke. Yeah. It's a farce. It's a joke. <laughs> this is a farce. Maybe the strangest thing, at least statistically speaking. Is the, <laughs> I'm not going. I'm not going back. I'm not double dipping. Uh, could okay. Fair is enough. the people who wanted to buy lottery tickets from the same market, and then some hmm. of them even bought tickets with numbers that matched the winning Powerball number. Oh, those were con artists. They were going to go somewhere else, and they were going to do a. I'm a prince in this country, and I need your help taking my money Ooh. out. Yeah, smart. Uh-huh. Wait, I don't understand. What's the problem? People, so somebody won, and they don't want to tell anybody. And then where where are the people that are asking for money? What is their deal? They're just like... They just want free money. And so, like, yeah, yeah you don't really ever want to win the lottery because... Yo, yes, I do, actually. No, I'm actually <laughs> fucking fine with that. I'm yeah. I'm fine with telling... Because people will come out of the woodwork. I, that's fine. That okay. Let me... Hey, universe, if you're listening, it's me, Margaret. Uh, fucking let me win the lottery. I'm fine. You've already taken an assumed name. Well, it's, it's me, Mike. It's me, Mike right. Weeby. I, 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 give me all the money. I want to win the lottery. I'll do a bunch of good stuff with it. And I'll also tell us that a lot of, bit, a lot of ding-dongs, no, I'm not buying you fucking two chainsaws. Mike, you could hire me to tell people no. But there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm employing, I'm employing, I'm mm-hmm. creating jobs. I'm not just spending it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The prime suspects are a quiet couple named Wilbur M- Miller and Nancy Weinbrenner, but they're only suspects because a year ago, Wilbur Miller won $10,000 on a scratch-off lottery ticket. You're lucky. It's on hot streak. Yeah, lucky. like, I don't... That happens a lot. People, like, will win the lotto twice. That's, like, a common... Uh, Maybe it's not common. I guess it's probably not common, but you hear about it happening. When there's some pro football player that won the lottery yeah, twice? Yeah, the, the guy who did... Cocaine on the sideline, um, cowboy. He, Troy Aikman. <laughs> no, that's not true. It's uh, I forget his name. I forget. It's Hollywood Hulk Hogan. It was not, it was not Hulk Hogan. Was it a Hollywood Hulk Hogan? Yeah, nobody wants. He was a heel. He was a bad guy. That's the type of behavior he would do. Right. right. Cocaine. Hollywood Hulk. Right. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. And then, and then Hollywood Hulk Hogan and regular Hulk Hogan would probably go watch Soul Man after that. <laughs> Ooh, those pieces of shit. Probably sitting on either side of Mark sharing the same tub of popcorn brother <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's crazy how can you but do he won that? the lottery he won the lottery twice like the real i mean like millions of dollars in the lottery yeah. twice that's fucking wild but yeah. i mean there's a big difference between winning ten thousand dollars and winning 731 million dollars but still yeah. winning both is insane there is 730 million nine hundred and ninety thousand dollars difference between those two numbers uh mike are those real numbers Hold on. Yes. Wow. So, yeah, that's a big difference. I don't play Lotto. I did it right when it came out. I did it a couple of times and was like, wait a minute. I'm not, ma- I'm not rich. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to keep doing yeah, this. This isn't paying off. It's not working. It's not work. This isn't working immediately. That's- and I've, I've put that attitude on almost everything I've ever done in life. And <laughs> it's paid off. <laughs> That's why you know how to say hello in 14 languages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ni hao. Anyang. Hola. Oh, oh. Hola. 
Good day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Top of the morning to you. Oh, yeah. That's the guy from before. That's the All guy. right, so these lot of ding dongs. So the bramble bush around his trees. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, have to get out, uh, get out some power tools to trim it down. It, it, it hurts me, and when they go to do me business. <laughs> So the couple wrote a letter to the local paper saying they were not the winners, and then they hired an attorney to pursue harassment claims against anyone demanding money from them. Just like the winners would do. The market that sold the ticket also won $100,000 in prize money. Can you, people that have dealt with the law, can, is it harassment if someone's sending you a letter saying, hey, will you give me money? I think it's more that they're like coming to their house and like knocking on their door and like, you know, trying to catch them in public. That really happened? That's weird. Yeah. Especially, yeah. again, it's a, it's a town with 1,200 people. And so it's a big mystery there. Like everybody has right. their own speculation as to who it is and like... Just going to the casino, people were like, oh, he's going to the casino to gamble all his millions and winnings. And then there are rumors that... Uh, what kind of idiot would go win, a, win that much money and then go to the casino? Gotta let it ride. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never get this lucky again. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the owner of the market also said that there was he had his own speculation about who it was. And he said mm. one guy used to come in every single week and buy lottery tickets. And then after that week, he never came in again probably shot himself when he missed his chance yeah that that's a true i mean i don't know there was like a big book of crazy deaths and there was like i remember reading a story which it's all pretty unverified but i remember reading a story about a guy who like gambled like went and wrote down the same three numbers every every week for like 30 years and missed it just one week and those numbers came up and he just immediately <laughs> killed himself Oh. Which is a valid move, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I kind of get, I get, I get the immediate desire to kill yourself. How much did he not win? Double digit millions, 20, 20 millions, sort of 20, 30 million or whatever. I'm not saying that there's any, pr any, any good price to mm. kill yourself, but I was, you said the same three numbers. And so I'm thinking like, right. You know, he's out like 200 bucks. It was a raffle for a Yugo. <laughs> no, I mean, why don't it was three numbers or five or whatever? The church raffle for a, a really good pie. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I'm just, I am here to justify various reasons of suicide. That's what I. <laughs> that's that's one of our three mission statements. <laughs> yep, we were the preeminent pro suicide I can, podcast. I can validate your your suicide in that scenario. Mm -hmm. like, no, yeah, something actively right. wants something within the intrinsic force of the universe actively wants you to feel pain. If that happens, then yes, something within the fabric of reality is against you. Why fight it? <laughs> Ooh, but doesn't that also make you a very important player in the universe? Yeah, it's true. You're important. If the suddenly. universe is conspiring against you, doesn't that mean that you have some innate purpose you, you you somehow are a threat to the universe which is that's kind of cool maybe you just miss your calling as a villain maybe but then you got to start dressing like the joker and laying down around a whole bunch of knives and dumb shit like that <laughs> that's right mm. the, the, the time it takes to arrange all those implements just perfectly yeah for... you got to get a tattoo of a, it's a jack in the box but yeah. it's a Sultan out or something it's... nobody wants that you don't want that on your chest no, but you got to do it. You got to. I mean, you can't not do it. What, do you, what else are you going to do? Right. So this is a real thing, too, though, that I know I, I bagged on the Shriners a second ago a little bit. But a lot of these groups, if they will identify somebody who either wins a ton of money or is getting older and doesn't have any like immediate family, they they. And I'm and the movie question was, I wonder if there's been a, it seems like there's kind of there would be a movie about these groups that go out. And like, if you have anyone in your family, like a distant uncle or something that has significant or even a little bit of land or something they will be and they're in the hospital for something they will be bombarded by charity legit charities doing everything they can to try to get uh, a bequest that is a that's a telemarketing gig i would not want <laughs> no no but it's it is it's like the american red cross it's the shriners all these groups that are they're legit charities but they are vultures when it comes to stuff like that mm. and they're legit charities but they spend most of their money just raising more money yeah, a lot of, a lot of staffing. Yeah, well, in the Shriners especially because I I I donated money to the Shriners because 
I think you like those little cars. No, because I think kids getting hurt is awful, Kevin. Okay. And oh, <laughs> that's right. I, t- I took the high road quickly. Uh, <laughs> and, and is that is that why they have those little cars? Because they're safer for kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just a it's an outrage thing. It's just a they're for kids. They're very pro children. It's just a it's just a ma- Mason group, right? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, the Shriners they fund a lot of hospitals and a lot of a lot of. Uh, like actual burnt kid stuff. That's like their, their thing. Uh, I donated some money and then immediately I was inundated with nonsense marketing for me to donate more money from them. And yeah. I'm, I'm convinced they spent more money trying to, trying to get me to give them more money than I gave them in the first place. And it just became infuriating. It, it turned me off on charity forever. Yep. It's, if yeah. you get on our Patreon, you're not getting charity. You're getting content. <laughs> and you're getting stickers. Right. Well, you, we won't contact you after the fact because we can't be bothered. I mean, we probably won't We're too remember. busy telling the news. Yeah. This is a full-time <laughs> gig, which is what makes it so hard that Mark's not here. I know, right? Because, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't want to say it, but there yeah. we go. The market that sold the ticket also won $100,000 in prize money. Mm. The owner gave bonuses to all the employees, upgraded the kitchen and dining areas, and added a new menu item, ham salad. Ugh. God, Isn't that just chef salad? No, no, like like ham salad, like you put on a, a sandwich. Wait, oh, like what? tuna salad? Like but tuna salad, salad? But with ham, yeah. Oh, what? gross. <laughs> what the fuck? Gross. What is wrong with this town? <laughs> That's why they're impoverished. Yeah. <laughs> Home of ham salad. Ugh. Ugh. Hold on. I'm getting an Amber alert. They had. It's <laughs> <laughs> not funny. It's happening. It's, it's Dallas, not. Texas. Amber alert. I didn't get one. I'm closer to Dallas. Jeter than you children. Are. Late 1990s Ford gray sedan. Check local media. I'm glad you're reading uh, this. People people need this information. Uh, right. Hey, I don't know. Mark, Maybe if this kidnapping ends in tragedy, please remove our reference to the Amber <laughs> Alert. Oh, look. Hang on, guys. I got an Amber Alert. Oh, oh. <laughs> Should I go walking around after this and see if I see anything? That's see, right. If I see any kids to ask if they're missing. This is probably a great time to kidnap a kid because everybody get confused by all the Amber Alerts. No, actually, that's that's true. Is like the big criticism of, of Amber Alerts is that they prioritize like all police to that Amber Alert. So it's a great time to commit crime. That's the official position of INS. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm, I'm I was I'm still doing the math on that. So they they prioritize all the police uh, in the area towards focusing on the amber alert so you can like right. if any other crimes get called oh no, yeah then a that's, lower that's when you that's when you do a, a diamond heist yeah but you know what i would i would trade any number of diamonds to save a child whose life is in jeopardy in a lot, yeah in oh, a lot yeah. of ways children children are our most valuable jewels children mm-hmm. are the diamonds of society mm-hmm. other than actual diamonds you guys are just cynical, cruel people. Yeah, it's well, difficult. Guess it's hard sometimes to. A lot of things can put me to make me that way. <laughs> what did you say? I said a lot of things put me to make me that way. Cynical. I mean, a lot of things. Oh no! <laughs> you heard me. You know I what did. I meant. I did. I did. And now, I, now I do. I was. I just was. I want to make sure I heard you right, Mike. That's all. Yeah. Well, you. You. It's. You know what? It's Mark's fault. That's why this yeah, is happening. Yeah. A lot of this is Mark's <laughs> fault. We said and, that yet? Yeah. I feel like. Is it an honor if you're the Amber and Amber Alert? Well, I think the first Amber like died, right? Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ooh. Amber Alerts work. I don't know. Mm. I, I think. Well, I think Amber Alerts a lot of times are probably stem from child custody issues. Yeah, where it's it's retaining a child past. It's alert an alert for everybody, but also there's probably a lot of people who can immediately start connecting the dots and yeah can help locate and identify a person that they haven't identified the person, but it is an identifiable person. I would say, mm-hmm. and so that helps. I don't think there's a lot of like straight up. Your mom told me to pick you up. She's in the hospital. I'm mm-hmm. here to give you a ride. I don't know if that's what. Although we, as children, we were told that would happen at least once or twice in our lifetimes. Yeah, I never did. How many never times did. did it happen to you? 
I mean, I'm, I'm uh, way Not over even it once. twice. No, and no one ever wanted to kidnap me. No, I never got any kidnap vibes. Did you guys see that movie Kid Detective that came out like this last year? No, no, but I want to. Is it good? Yeah, it's worth watching for sure. It's kind of funny, but it's got a an enjoyably sad undercurrent. Oh, just like me. Just like me. Yeah, just that's <laughs> that's how I describe you often. Yeah. Yeah, Mike's funny. Funny. A little bit of a yeah. sadness that rolls <laughs> through him. Yeah. About after about an hour and a half, you'll start to get that, oh, this is really just a tragedy. Yeah. This is not if I was is, a battery for some reason, right. did I leave the AR of my psychic battery on? Because it's draining really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I don't describe you that way at all, Mike. I describe you as a a joy to be around, a pleasurable human being. Oh, you know, actually, I don't think I've ever. Yeah, that sounds that sounds that sounds sincere. So the weird thing is, I don't think I've. And I believe thinking, I've never described you as anything to anyone. I've never, and I don't think either you, Kevin. That sounds the most <laughs> accurate. Why would I? But I'm just trying to think. Like, why would I ever describe someone that I'm friends with? I just. I mean, not even what we look like. I don't think so. I describe you in a very Kaiser Sose kind of <laughs> way. <laughs> well, and like that, he's gone. He's gone. You know, Brian looks like somebody played by Kevin Spacey. No, we're not. Mm. No, not really. He's coming back. He's, he's going to be in a movie soon, right? Yeah. Starring so. opposite the first female pinhead, maybe. Yes, maybe. <laughs> That'd be a good role for him. Yeah, maybe people would see him get killed. Oh yeah, God, you know, I wonder if anybody, I wonder if any of these people, you know, who have done horrible things in their past, it's later disclosed, it's uncontroverted, if they will ever just embrace that. And yeah, like, well, I'll, I'll be in a horror movie where I'm dismembered. Cause, yeah, you know, it's got to be good money in that. It would be cathartic. Like if the aforementioned Bill Cosby ever got out of prison, Ghost Dad too, he gets killed again. 75% of the movie is the death. Yeah, yeah. It's, and then the last 25% is nobody caring that their father died. Yeah. That would be, everyone, that would be the movie. Yeah. yeah. So, Brian, you like when you're traveling, you like going to weird museums, right? I sometimes will stop at a museum if it looks... I'll go to any kind of museum. It doesn't have to be weird. I love looking at curated objects. Have you ever been to Croatia? Uh, yes. So this next story comes to us from NPR. According to the website TripAdvisor, one of the mm-hmm. most reviewed... Highest rated tourist attractions in all of Croatia isn't a world-renowned fine art or history museum. It's not Mm -hmm. a restaurant or hip club. It's not a battlefield or historical estate. Instead, it's a place called Froggy Land. I'm in. Froggy Land. Is that the Croatian way to say Froggy Land? What's the language they speak in Croatia? Croatian. Croat. I'm going to go with Croat because I like the way that sounds. (laughs) Yeah. Froggy Land contains 21 mm. dioramas that are over 100 years old and feature 507 very realistic looking taxidermied frogs recreating scenes of early 20th century human life. That's awesome. Froggy Land is the creation of Ferenc Mayer, a Hungarian taxidermist who spent 10 years catching and stuffing frogs to fill his dioramas. The scenes are incredibly detailed. A classroom with a froggy teacher tries to restore order among naughty students, while a couple young frogs hit each other with rulers, and one balances a miniature pencil on his nose. He's like the Norman Rockwell of taxidermy. That's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, he's Norman Rockwell if Norman Rockwell had to murder to complete his medium. <laughs> <laughs> Who's to say he didn't? Um, no. I'm not saying that. Okay. <laughs> So other exhibits include frogs taking turns diving into a swimming room, uh, into a swimming pool, mm-hmm. ballroom dancing to a full band, and a pool hall complete with billiards tables and poker players. Frogs playing poker. <laughs> the famous painting. It's a famous painting too. I have, I'll get a painting of that up in my man, man cave. Mm-hmm. Cover up all those fist holes. Yeah. <laughs> When asked how the museum started, the owner said, quote, 50 years ago, somebody left these frogs behind in an attic in Serbia, and my parents bought them. Prior to the pandemic, Froggy Land had as many as 50,000 visitors per year. But the owner claims Croatians don't like Froggy Land. Almost all his visitors are American and British tourists. 
American first. Did you hear that, Mike? Yep. America first. That's what I've mm-hmm. always said. <laughs> America first in Croatia. That's what I've always, always said. Yep. That's what I, that's what I scarred my leg up with <laughs> because a tattoo isn't permanent enough. If I ever meet the president, I'm going to show him. Wait, which president? Uh, any president. I'm just going to pull down my pants and go, look what, <laughs> look what this says. <laughs> look what I have. Look what right. I did. Look what I did. Right. Please ignore my medically certified <laughs> big genitalia and days down my leg. It- you know what? If that's the big treat for him or her. That's okay. Very, yeah, how very it's very enlightening. That could yeah. be that could happen. Mm-hmm. There could be a girl president. If there can be a girl Hellraiser, there can be a girl president. Okay. <laughs> both are terrifying monsters, and both <laughs> can be done by a lady. <laughs> Wake up. You get us something to think about. It's 2021. Yeah. It's 2021. That's all I'm saying. If a girl can be a Freddy Cougar, a girl can be a president. <laughs> Frederica Cougar. <laughs> Forgot. They're knitting needles. Yeah, she's got knitting needle hands, and she's she mm-hmm. she tries to kill. Frederica Cougar mm-hmm. tries to kill young men because <laughs> they're younger than her. She knits a giant sweater that. Yeah, she knits a big sweater, <laughs> and then she drinks like a she drinks like a Cosmo afterwards, and goes mm-hmm. like, ah, ha, ha, "I'm evil for a girl." <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. I, I you should write this. this sounds... I, I know. There's a lot of ideas yeah. that are kind of hey, timestamp, poor man's patent, poor man's patent, poor man's patent. <laughs> if you say it three times. So if anyone tries to steal my idea for Frederica Kruger, Frederica mm-hmm. Cougar, you fucking you're gonna get sued. You're gonna get your <laughs> ass sued off. Take that, listeners. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think that our listeners would do it, but maybe they'd be in a car yeah. driving around some right. some right. some Hollywood A list jag off. <laughs> you know they're trying to get other people to listen because they're good, honorable people. Yeah, right. Because that's all we have to do is get one person to listen. And I don't, you know, I don't think that whoever is going to know that this, you know, this right. you know creep with slicked back hair and a tiny tiny right. little ponytail as they're driving around Palm Beach in a in a white Mustang 5.0 with the top down mm-hmm. and they're black you're blasting your summer INS and then all of a sudden you notice hey this guy's taking notes a little bit too much on what Mike <laughs> says I don't put that on you dear listener no. I put that on Honestly, I put it on capitalism, neo capitalism. Neo, what if a what if a good honest late stage neo capitalism? What, what if a good honest Irish Irish person gives a ride to a hitchhiking Alaskan or Scott? I could see There's, that happening. Yeah. The Alaskan probably wouldn't understand because some yeah, of the yeah. words have. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. They, they, they wouldn't even... know where these words are coming from. Uh, yeah. like, yeah. we're Who is talking them. right now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, What's exactly. Outside your car. They're probably, I, I feel bad for the Irish listener because they just got their speakers punched out because there's a man in the door. <laughs> there's a man in the door. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get him out. <laughs> <laughs> there's anything to take away from this episode it is be right. careful when picking up hitchhikers they are all murderers yeah uh-huh. mm-hmm. you guys ever pay- pick up a hitchhiker uh yeah who'd you pick up eileen warnos who eileen warnos she is the original female serial killer lavender face yeah. she is a female serial killer i didn't know that yeah maybe Who's not the ki- first but she's one of the most famous was she portrayed in a movie? She was portrayed in the movie by Charlize Theron. Oh, Charlize Theron. What is she going to be in the next Mad Max movie or not? What's no, the deal they're getting, there? They're getting somebody else, I think. And she's good in that. Yeah. She's great in it. Anyway, what's going on in Croatia? Meanwhile, in Croatia. Oh, yeah. uh, Froggy Town. Was it Rowdy Roddy Piper in a movie about this? Hell comes to Frog yeah, Town. True. Yeah. So back in Croatia. The owner has made the decision to sell Froggy Land to a group of American investors and ship it here to the United States. Okay. He added, quote, Sometimes a mirror of society works best to contemplate and understand your own life 
existence, and purpose of life, Froggy Land is exactly that mirror. Unquote. Now I like that. Who is this investor? Uh, it's mysterious. It, it is not Ugh. revealed who the investor I'm is. I'm just right. so afraid it's going to be Elon Musk. Somebody in Maryland who just won $270 million and just spent yeah. 269 on Froggy yeah. Town. <laughs> it's an investment. Do you think Frog Town is in Frogland? No, Frog Town is, it, is the next town over. Okay. They should make a little diorama where there's a tiny little TV and they're watching Hell Comes to Frog Town. Ooh, uh, think of all, the, all you could do with all the raccoons. Ooh, baby. Mm. Yeah, I actually went to a oddities and curiosities at the convention center the other day and i bought a uh i bought a uh like a dried puffer fish oh really wow yeah. that's cool what are you gonna do with it probably sit on it by accident <laughs> <laughs> about to say there's sit or step on it yeah i mean it yeah. seems like it's set up for some sort of painful comic accident right after maybe you hear part of a conversation in another room that you you completely <laughs> just- <laughs> yeah yeah, I'm trying to hide and yeah. be quiet. Uh, no, but there's a lot of taxidermied stuff there. Uh, a lot, lots of, uh, yeah, a lot of like sweaty goths, sweaty Texas goths love taxidermied stuff. And that's uh, that is a fact. You can take it to the bank, the blood bank. <laughs> that's a that's a good tagline for your you doing a voiceover on a trailer for Frederica Cougar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think the script's kind of writing itself, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. As I was saying, not mm. everyone loves Froggy Land. One TripAdvisor review declared, quote, Yes, let's kill thousands of frogs for art and ask people, did you have fun? At the end of it, go if you have no soul, unquote. Well, half of that review was sarcastic, so I don't, you know what? If you're really, if you really cared about your uh, TripAdvisor reviews, leave the sarcasm to the masters. Who's that? David Spade. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Leave it to, to David Spades of the world. Okay. Who who wrote? Hey hey, who wrote that TripAdvisor review? David Spade. <laughs> <laughs> All hail the new master. It's. <laughs> I was going to show you guys Froggy Froggy Land. Oh, I love That's it! Super yeah. cool. Why would That's, you not want this? To describe what we're looking at here, uh, it's frogs, and they're going up a diving board, and they're majestically diving. Although I will say this: it's not safe to be diving that quickly on top of one another. They're they're really <laughs> like if they're and it looks like there is a lifeguard. Uh, what do you call a lifesaver? There. <laughs> Yes, a life, a life, life preserver. Life preserver. If there was a guard on duty, they would be shouting. But maybe that's, uh, you know, maybe that's just off screen. There's a a a bored teen frog yelling at them right. to to calm down. But it, it really looks like. Wouldn't you agree, Mike, that those those frogs jumping on top of each other into the water, diving in, they're up to hijinks. That looks yeah. like frog it hijinks. Is. It's really well it done. Is a, it yeah. is a mirror of our society for sure. Yeah. So our last story comes mm. to us from the Guardian. Guardian, what are they guarding again? Did we establish that yet? The Crown Jewels. The yes, the Crown Jewels. They are a British newspaper. They is it mostly crowns or is it a lot of scepters and rings? Are any of them cursed? And do any of them have other enchantments on them? A distant relative of mine, Major General Thomas Harrison, was involved in the beheading of Charles the First. And so as far as I'm concerned, those crown jewels belong to me. This is a so, King Ralph type situation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wasn't was there a lot of was Whopper somehow involved in King Ralph? Yeah, I think I think there was like a heavily tie sponsored in, yeah. like tie in. God, somebody lost her job over that. On Valentine's Day 2021, a man and a woman in Ukraine decided to handcuff themselves together in a last ditch attempt to end a cycle of breaking up and then making up. And I've seen the picture. Real, this it's, is a it's, very Sam and Diane scenario. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, this literally is a sitcom trope. Yeah. Yes. From that day forward, the two did everything together, from grocery shopping to cigarette breaks. While one oh. went to the bathroom or shower, the other would stand next to them. However, after 123 days handcuffed together, the couple decided to call it quits and had their mm-hmm. bonds cut off on Ukrainian television. 
the woman said, quote, I did not receive any attention from Alexander because we were constantly together. He did not tell me, I miss you, while I would like to hear that, unquote. So the man added, quote, we are not on the same wavelength. We are totally different. The couple hopes to auction off the handcuffs online and uh, donate part of the money to charity. Well, I'm just, I'm offended that anyone would create something or do something on their own and expect anybody to pay for it online. What a joke. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that either. That is bullshit. Too. What, what kind of assholes get together, hatch a scheme, and then ask people to donate money what kind to their of, scheme? Yeah. What kind of motherfuckers literally do anything for attention and attention alone? <laughs> That's, those are the worst. What do you think you deserve? A sticker for that? Yeah. If that. Yeah. I have to put myself out. I have to get everyone to look at me because mm -hmm. I have some, you know, fucking hole in my heart that I can't fill. And no matter how much attention I get, it's never quite filled up. And you're just so dumb that you can't figure out that that is the source of all your problems and that constantly having to go do these things in front of everyone for attention. It's just like, wake up people, you know? Right. The arrogance to think that you have anything that is so important to say that mm -hmm. anyone, much less someone you haven't met before, would be interested in what you have to say at all, as though it would make any difference or any impact on anyone else's life. Yeah. But the, the hubris, it's it's sickening. I honestly, I think that they should be chained up not to each other, but to a cell. Mm -hmm. I think they should be in a cell for life. And I think anyone that f acts in a manner that is so brazenly thirsty, as the kids say, <laughs> it, they need to be in there too. And also people, on top of that, people that affect... Because they sound like an older couple doing a, no, some they were stuff that children do. Well, they sound old, and I'm gonna yeah, continue with that yeah, line of thinking. I like, I like anyone that. doing anyone older and adopting young person things. You know what? They need to go skeet skeet their way out of here because <laughs> they are not on fleek. They are not fire. Mm. They are the opposite of fire. They are ice. <laughs> <laughs> They're, they're coating all their food in weak sauce. <laughs> they're slathering weak sauce on it, trying to be children. Leave youth to the young. Mm. Don't be a player hater. Be a player <laughs> participator. <laughs> Have yes. we told people about our Patreon yet? Have we brought that up? <laughs> Could we go what? ahead and Oh, yeah, we should that? tell them about our Patreon. Yeah. We just, got our, we just got stickers in. Yeah. You get those if you're on the Patreon. Yeah. You can get a mask or a t-shirt with art. Well, that's not on the Patreon. That's on Redbubble. Oh, wow. So you mean there's more than one way people can be a part of the show? That's yeah. awesome. What else the other ways? Yeah. That sounds tight, yo. Talk <laughs> about does, it. That does sound tight, Michael. <laughs> uh, they can they can get a t-shirt, right? Isn't that true, Kevin? That's redbubble.com slash, uh, I believe it's INS pod. If you search for INS pod, we'll come up. And don't those shirts and, and products feature artwork by world you know renowned as you say artist designer tattoo artist mike tidwell he is uh the hottest the hottest tattooist in seattle mm, yeah and in, in, in every way you can take that phrase mm -hmm. yes. in every way he does topless uh -huh. tattooing uh-huh he doesn't wear a shirt mm -hmm. when he does it yep and uh you can get his merch on redbubble at INS, the INS Pod Store, or you can get a sticker of his on our Patreon, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, International News Pod. Thank you for listening to the International News Service. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. INS, the news you need.